attrition in Tiati constituency, Baringo County, has seen three aspirants for political seats murdered in three months, the highest death rate in any political race for any political office in the country. The violence may be internal, but it's rocking the foundations of what was in 2013 a county that voted for the Jubilee Alliance almost to a man. And today, a storm is gathering in Tiati. Kanu's William Kamket is literally the last man standing in the now bloody contest for the Tiati parliamentary seat, the heartland of the Pokot community in Baringo. On the 18th of February, one of his competitors, the Jubilee aspirant Pepe Kitamba, who beat current Tiati MP Asman Kamama in the Jubilee nominations, and lawyer Morok MCA Kibet Cherete, was shot to death in a bar not far from where Kamket and I meet on this day. Leo ni Leo, tell your fellows to stop parroting. Remember your days are numbered. Mm. Can I campaign now? I don't know. How can I campaign? How can I campaign? First of all, we have to, we have these deaths to deal with. Death seems to be the watchword in Tiati. And whoever the grapevine pins these murders on will likely be a loser in these elections. Given that Pepe Kitamba bested Asman Kamama in the Jubilee primaries before his death, that scarlet letter had been Kamama's to carry, in spite of a lack of proof. But then another murder may have absolved Kamama of suspicion and made the politics of Tiati even more dangerous. The body of one Thomas Minito, the MCA for Churo Ward, and Kamama's brother-in-law was found floating in the Oldonyo Sabuk River. He was last seen five days earlier in Kabarnet. The people who picked him claim to be police officers. As politicians, I think our safety is not guaranteed. Those words are much heavier given that Kamama is the current chair of the Parliamentary Committee on Internal Security. But their impact is even heavier if you cast your eyes backwards to the last six months of the year. Drought had devastated the landscape all across Kenya, but the drought was driving conflict in Baringo, Laikipia, Turkana, Samburu, and Isiolo counties. The Pokot, whose fearsome reputation as among the most dangerous group of herders, was said to be on the offensive in Baringo and Laikipia, raiding the Tugen in Baringo and invading ranches and farms in Laikipia. Then came this. Muhalifu yoyote, alie na silaha, ameua kina mama na watoto, pia na nyeye asibakishwe. A security operation began targeting all raiders of all tribes, but the Pokot felt that they were the main prize. Kati nabadu umga bundugi, na mombiwa, Bring Patio Bunduki JMC, Patio Bunduki Turgana, Patio Bunduki Y Saburu, Sisi Tukapaki Pekiak. Tukapaki. Sasa Sisi Tumepaki. Sisi ni wawapi. This feeling of vulnerability and the murders of their leaders is spawning bitterness and a revolt against the ballot. So, 
tunazachukua caravan moja tuhubiri tiati tiati mzima tuseme hakuna kura tunapiga yote yote na ballot box irudishwe na tukae kivyetu kama wapoko and in an election where turnout is everything statements like these matter in 2013, Baringo County had 173,653 registered voters. 20,469 or 8.5% of them came from Tiati constituency. Out of every 10 people who registered in Tiati, 8 turned up to vote. And 3 out of every 4 voters there voted for the Jubilee Alliance. Now, with a police-led security operation that is widely viewed by the Pokot as subjective, things are different. How do you revert against the government? The only way perhaps is to vote the government out. Kamket's words shouldn't be taken lightly, given that he is a candidate in Kanu, which is affiliated to the Jubilee Party. The trouble with Tiati for any political formation is the insecurity itself. For Jubilee, it is that a once unshakable stronghold is now crumbling from the margins. For other parties, it is that they may not be able to campaign in the region. For both, it's the word that all politicians fear, apathy. 